there are two downsides to rom-com relationships. Uh, one, they're fictional, and two, they only last an hour and a half. <laughs> Happily ever after works great if the couple has a script and they don't exist past the credits. The thing is, I craved a rom-com until I ended up trapped in one. <laughs> Movies had no solid advice on how to keep my marriage going past the 40,000 hour mark. Which left, me, which left it unraveling behind the scenes. Only what was in frame was be, looked beautiful. I thought love had to feel like butterflies in my stomach, and I needed to incubate them in Hallmark Channel scenery to keep these delicate insects alive. My wife and I reached the part in the rom-com where that one plucky sidekick named, say, Jess, spoke the magic words to fix the relationship. You guys are meant for each other! Go and catch her before she leaves forever. Not one of my friends stepped up. Not even the one named Jessica. In the end, I got a divorce and sold our house during the 2008 housing crash. Roll credits with sad theme music. There I was after the no animals were harmed message scrolled by, still, you know, existing, alone. So I theater hopped into another movie. It started like a buddy flick. Just two guys bonding over <laughs> rock climbing at work. My new friend's name was Daniel. He was the tall, strong, and silent type. Hanging off cliffs and veganism were his entire personality. <laughs> he didn't say much, but he was the perfect plot device to kick off this new film. Q. The tall, strong, and silent type invites coworker to the gym, and something unexpected happens. There I was, struggling on the climbing route. A spring-loaded winch on the ceiling tugged at a harness fastened around my crotch so I didn't fall down a 20-foot wall. I finally touched the top and rappelled down at full speed in triumph. Suddenly, a woman crossed below me just as I kicked off my final descent. My pro stunt poofed into a slapstick midair. Look out! I shouted. I sounded like that too. <laughs> she gasped as I landed on my butt right in front of her. Then her shock became laughter. I tried to stand up, but I was still attached to the ceiling, and I ended up bobbing back and forth like a helpless fish. <laughs> then I looked up and saw her for the first time. A whole rainforest of butterflies exploded in my stomach like the violent terraforming of a desolate planet. Uh, it, she was a brunette Zoe de Chanel double. Her height brought her lips to a comfortable kissing level, a, a miracle given how short I am. Her 20 gigawatt smile surged through me. My heart didn't stand a chance. I fell for her. Oh no, not again. This wasn't a buddy movie at all. It was a fucking rom-com. <laughs> that grueling five-year marriage was just a cold open. This is what was meant to be. Q, the meat cute, starring Amara. Oh my god, are you okay? I asked. I kept worrying about her, but she was the one who grabbed my arms and steadied me. Her fingers were strong and had small calluses at their tips from the sport. I'm fine, she replied. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, all systems. Well, actually, what I meant was, yeah, I'm good. Great. That good, huh? She said, smirking at me. Am I okay to leave you here? Yeah, I replied. I'm waiting for friends. I gazed at her. My mind, my stupid mind, went. Her eyes and her smile are so pretty. She looks like a fairy. Her boobs look, whoop, stay on her face. Good. Her eyes are so lovely, and her smile, oh, the, the, there goes her eyes again. And her smile, back to her eyes. Smile, no, smile, eye, 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 mouth. My vision bounced around her features like rabid facial recognition software. I was involuntarily encoding an image I didn't know I would ever see again. Thankfully, this only lasted a second. Shit. I thought I did. Did it? Ah, oh, damn it. 
But what a perfect scene. Nor Ephron, the goddess of rom-coms herself, finally blessed her best disciple with the romance I've been chasing. Watch, we're going to have a fun montage of just slipping by one another before we adorably bumped into each other again before Act 2. But instead, she walked 15 feet to Dan. He bent down and gave her a kiss. All movies have a villain. <laughs> Yet every villain is a hero in their own story. I am that kind of hero. And this is my story. <laughs> Q, a unique, troublesome situation. There's this adage you go that uh, there's this adage that you shouldn't go by your first impression because the more you learn about a person, the more that person will disappoint you. But knowing Amara made my infatuation worse. She caught every single one of my jokes without dropping a beat. Just my type. <laughs> Anything you said was important and interesting to her. People couldn't help being happy around her. Daniel was the exception. Around him, she sounded defensive, as if raising her volume would set off explosives. I began to notice his needless cruelty. Dan used her poor, um, uneducated family background as the butt of his jokes. His mood would flip without notice. He would tell her, you never listen. You're always late. That's not how I remember it. Amara would have to triage the situation, and he would make a show of pulling away from her attempts to touch him like he was six. I soon stopped stamping gaslight bingo sheets. They just filled up too easily. I called her on days he threw these bad tantrums. Amara would unpack Dan's latest nonsense, and I tried to cheer her up. Yes, I was allergic to boundaries. <laughs> but I was the hero, and I made her laugh. If I followed Nora Ephron's teachings, we ended up together anyway, so it's fine. One bad day in late September, she just carried the phone around the house doing chores while venting to me. I tried to cheer her up by mourning the poor dust bunny she swept up. Oh no! Not Bill, Betty, and Bobby's 1 through 12! Run! She laughed, but she soon cycled back to Dan's bullshit. I had no power to change the situation except one thing. I want to tell you something, but I shouldn't, I said. Just say it, she insisted. She wasn't an idiot. She knew what was coming. I can't, I replied. Just say it, she re repeated. I have feelings for you, I said finally. I do too, she replied. And hung up. <laughs> I was so shocked, I didn't even put the phone down and continue the conversation in my head. Wait, Amara. Did you really, really mean that, really? Or did you mean you had feelings for yourself? Because no way did you mean me, and, and fair enough, too. Shakespeare had nothing on me. I was smooth. Cue the romantic montage. Kinda. Being able to act on her feelings thrilled me. Amar returned my glances. We found ways to touch each other without Dan noticing. We were co-conspirators, and the silent telegraphing was our secret code. Her friend Chloe played a breakout role as the most valuable sidekick. She hated Dan's bullshit and considered me a much better option for Amara. So she covered for us. Chloe would invite all of us to live indie music performances, you know, the really obscure ones, knowing Dan would refuse. And then she went alone to give us some privacy. We stole time together in 90-minute pieces. Q, a relationship in jeopardy. Successes in our spy games emboldened me. Our hero was winning. I pressed Amara to run away with me, but she dug in. She began to skip our plans unexpectedly, only to go on dates with Daniel, where they fawned over each other, at least according to social media. But when we got together, I was the only person in the room again. I wonder whether I would get 
my Amara or his Amara. I understood much later that it was stupid to think of her in those terms. She was her Amara, and she didn't want to be pushed in any direction. Q, grand gestures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My solution to her slipping away were bigger shows of affection. The ladies had bought tickets to a YouTube concert, so I got really expensive. Uh, I got a really expensive one for Chloe in exchange for hers, so Amar and I could be together, just like before. They both refused, so I ended up five rows from someone I wasn't there to see. <laughs> I resented every last one of Bono's nose hairs. <laughs> a week later, everything would be fine. Then, feeling the relationship freeze up again, I made another huge gesture. This would be the point in the movie where the audience would be shouting, Leave her! But the characters on screen never listen. On New Year's Eve, I booked the last suite at the Disneyland Hotel. Mm -hmm. I texted Amara, we could watch fireworks and get room service for breakfast. I got radio silence, so I didn't go. She texted me on the second. I told Daniel everything. I was heartbroken and nervous about Daniel showing up. <laughs> then fed up with the whole situation. I should have been eating Mickey Mouse pancakes in a robe, damn it! <laughs> Cue the happy ending. For no one. <laughs> Once again, life went off script. Nor Efron, why have you forsaken me? Did I not follow your scriptures devoutly? I just repeated them tonight. The twist, there were no heroes. Everyone was a villain all along, disguised as decent people. I played the obsessed Lothario with no boundaries and facial hair from the darkest timeline. <laughs> Amara was the damsel stringing everyone along. And Dan started the movie with so many red flags, he was far from heroic. Even Chloe, the plucky sidekick supreme, failed to tell us we were meant for each other. Because in truth, we weren't. Amara finally ended the relationship a few weeks later. I was frustrated and exhausted. The lovable romantic hero was gone. I played things exactly how you, you wanted, I said, lashing out. She broke into frustrated tears. You think I know what I'm doing? She said, and that was that. She had actually had given me a gift. I was too much of a coward to let go, and she had to face whatever betrayal I felt entitled to sling at her because she broke up with me. The last I heard from Amara was an email she and Dan probably wrote together. I no longer want to have contact with you. Any contact you initiate will be dealt with in a legal manner. <laughs> this was after hearing nothing from me. Yeah, it got really weird at work. <laughs> I avoided telling the whole story until now because I didn't want to confront what my actions and beliefs said about me. If this were indeed a film, I'd want to take every copy and burn it in a spectacular bonfire <laughs> that ignited into a huge explosion. <laughs> That's the Hollywood ending this film deserves. Roll the damn credits. That is Hoenn Mack. <laughs>